Hello everyone and welcome back. So today we are going to be building random mill generator. I built this with React and also Tailwind. Okay, and we're not gonna use a uh, create React app but because we are gonna use Fight. All right, and also the API we get from this the mill DB. Okay, we get this random here. Okay, this API here, and also as you can see, if I click get a new mill. We get the skeleton and then we get the data. Okay, we get the image here. We get the ingredients, instructions, and also the YouTube video here. Okay, pretty cool. As you can see, nice. And it's gonna be responsive as well. If I open in a mobile, it's gonna be look like this. All right, let's get new milk. As you can see, we have beautiful uh, skeleton here. Okay, yeah, that's what we are gonna be building and hope you enjoy let's get started all right so what we need to do first is let's open the terminal i have this one here so in here i'm going to generate the fight okay so i'm going to use yarn so i'm going to say but first i'm going to create a folder called random mail generator and i'm going to cd into the folder okay so let's say cd into the random mail generator all right so inside in here, I'm going to say yarn, create fight. Okay, I'm going to create fight inside this folder. So I'm going to say dot slash and hit enter. Okay, so we need to type in the package name. So let's say random mail generator. Okay, so hit enter and I'm going to select react here and just react. And now we need to say yarn install in here. Okay, it's going to be install the dependency, just React and I think the React DOM. All right, so it's done. So now let's open this inside a uh, Visual Studio code. And here we go. We have the React application here. So the first thing what we need to do is let's open the terminal. And in here, I want to say yarn uh, dev, I think. Okay, if you're using npm, you can say npm run dev. And now we can open the localhost 3000. And as you can see, we have this one. Now what we need to do is let's clean the app a little bit. I'm going to just remove the logo here. All right, the CSS. And let's remove everything here. And inside the app.js, app.js x, I'm going to, let's just remove all the header here, make it simple. So here I'm going to say, let's say, hello React, all right. And let's remove the use state here, the logo and app CSS, okay. It's so now save and we should see this hello React, okay. So what we need to do first is we need to install the uh, Tailwind, all right. So let's go to documentation here, go to framework guides. And let's select this fight here. And what we need to do, just copy this and paste that in here. Okay, and hit enter. All right, so it's done. Now we have the Tailwind config.js file here. And what we need to do next, let's just copy this content and we are going to put in here. Okay, cool. And let's go to index.css. And we need to just remove everything and put the Tailwind base component and then delete this. And what next? Next, we need to just use the Tailwind class. So let's try. I'm going to go back here. And in here, let's say class name background. I'm going to say red, uh, let's say 500. Okay. And save and let's see what we have. Nothing happened. Yeah, that's because we don't yet uh, run the app. Let's see. And as you can see, we have red here. Okay, cool. We can also say tag center, I think. And here we go. The text is going to be in the center. All right, nice. All right, so the first thing that what we need to do is I'm going to styling the mobile version. Okay. So let's make it something like this. And I'm going to close this uh, terminal and let's do in here what I'm going to do. Let's remove everything here. And I'm going to say maximal width. I want to set that to 4XL. All right. 
and make it center so i want to say mx auto and uh, padding horizontally i'm going to set that to let's say four and also the padding vertically i'm going to set that to 10 okay and also here i have a button okay this button have a tax let's say get new mail all right if i save and as you can see we have this button here so now let's styling this button here i'm going to add the class name so let's say class name set equals to the background i'm going to set that to gray 800 okay and also the text let's say white the padding horizontally i'm gonna set that to four and padding vertically i'm gonna set that to two okay and the width is going to be full okay so if i save now this is what we have okay but i need to add the rounded here so let's say rounded medium this one cool but if i on the medium browser okay like this one i need to change the width so let's do here i want to say if uh the browser is on the medium i need to set the width into let's say 40 okay which is 10 ram so if i save and let's expand this bam okay nicely so next let's go down here and i'm going to add the h1 okay so let's say this is the title okay let's say title and let's add the class name here let's do class name that is equals to the text i'm going to set it to 4xl and the font let's say bold say bold and also the margin top i'm going to set it to six and also let's add the underline here so if i save and this is what we have okay so next let's add the div here okay so let's say div and inside this div i have another div as well okay this is going to be the image the container of the image so here i want to say class name set as equals to and in here i'm going to say margin top to let's say four and also the border i'm going to set that to orange okay let's say orange let's say 500 i don't know let's say 500 and also the border i want to set that to four okay just the border width and also it's going to be rounded medium and i'm going to set the hake into let's say 80 all right so inside in here we have the image tag so let's say image and in the alt here i'm gonna say let's say image for now and the source let's grab the source here i'm going to copy this one here and i'm going to grab the thumbnail here okay the url here so let's just copy this and go back put that in here so now if i save and let's take click this is what we have okay we need to styling this this image of course so let's go in the mobile and in here i'm going to add the class name okay so let's say class name the width i'm going to set that to full and the height i'm going to set that to full as well so now it's what we have and also we need to set the object fit into cover so let's say object cover okay this one here i save and cool so now let's create the ingredients so in here i'm going to let's add another div okay and in this div here i'm going to add the class name set equals to the matting the margin vertically i want to set it to six okay and also inside in here i have h1 h1 put h3 and i want to say ingredients all right so in this history let's put the class name here and the text i want to set that to 4xl and also the font is going to be bold let's say font bold and also the margin bottom i'm going to set that to okay and if i save we have this ingredient so now we need to create a variable here so let's say cons ingredients so that equals to it's going to be array and inside this array we have object and let's say ingredient all right so the value i'm going to grab from the api so let's say let's say this one here okay let's just copy and put that in here 
and also we have the measure and in this measure we have let's say one pound all right let's just copy and paste that in here okay i think just one object is fine so now we need to map through these ingredients down here so let's say ingredients dot map okay we grab the individual item and the key that's the index okay and the index and in here i'm going to run a function called let's say render list okay we don't have yet but we are going to create letters so let's say item and uh, index okay so now we need to create the render list function so let's say cons render list okay so it goes to our function here and we need to just return a jsx in here but we need to grab the let's say item and the index okay so in here let's say let's say div here and in this div i'm going to add the class name so let's say class name that is equals to the display i'm going to set that to flex and also the text let's say small all right and also inside this display flex i'm going to put cli okay and this lie here i'm going to put the item dot ingredient so let's say item dot ingredient okay and also here let's put the span okay i'm going to use span here and in here i want to put the item dot measure all right and we just need to add the dash here okay so let's go to span and i'm going to add class name in this span so let's say italic okay and also the text let's say gray let's say 500 okay so now if i save and let's take a look this is what we have okay it's pretty pretty nice all right so the next thing is i'm going to let's create the instructions i'm going to copy this history and down here okay i'm going to put the let's say div okay and inside this div i have has three and put the no i think we can just paste that in here the has three here okay and just change this text here into instructions cool so now we have the instructions and i'm going to put the p tag here let's say lorem let's say 5t or something let's say 20 all right and yeah i think that's it so now let's save let's take a click okay nice so now we need to uh, render the youtube embed down here so let's go with this uh article here okay we need to uh let's use this talent css aspect ratio plugin so i think we can just copy this one here okay so let's open the terminal here and i'm going to paste that in here okay so let's hit enter so we need to go to talwin.config.js and just copy this plugin all right so let's go to say talwin config.js and inside these plugins we need to put the talwin css aspect ratio okay so to use this is pretty simple we can just copy this all right and let's go to main not main but app and we can just put down here i think we should not put the div here inside the div here okay because we are going to set this div into display grid okay so as you can see uh, the closing tag is in here we don't need put the div here inside the grid of course so we need to put outside the grid like that okay let's copy this one here okay we need to put in here like that so in here we need to change this class into class name because we on the 
JSX right now. So let's say class name. Okay. And also this frame border, we need to use camel case, I think. Yeah, camel case. So in this allow full screen, you need to use couple camel case as well. So let's say allow full screen. It's going to be uppercase. And yeah, I think that's it. So now let's say yarn, yarn dev. Let's see what we have. And here we go. As you can see, we have this uh, image, ingredients, instructions, and this beautiful YouTube embed here. Okay. So we need to add the margin top, I think, in here. So let's say margin top to, let's say, six. Okay. Just make a space. Okay. So it's pretty cool. So now in the medium and more, I need to the image and the ingredient in just one uh, row here. So let's go to oh, where's my this one here. Okay. So in here, I'm going to say class name for the medium and more. I'm going to set this is going to be grid. And also for the medium and more, I'm going to say grid template. I think grid column column let's say two okay and here we go we have this two column right now and what we need to do next is let's add the gap so let's say medium okay i'm gonna set that the gap let's put i don't know let's say four maybe so let's say save and okay beautiful so if i on the mobile it's going to be look like this but in the desktop it's going to be like this okay pretty nice cool all right, so now let's get the data from the API. And the first thing is I'm going to create another folder here. Let's say hooks because I'm going to create custom hooks and give a name use Axios. All right, so we need to install the Axios first. So I want to say yarn at Axios. Okay, so in here I want to say RIFCE. And we don't need to return JSX in here. We need to return the object. Okay. So down here, we need to run the app again. And then in here, I'm going to create a state. Okay. So let's say cons. Let's give a name response and set response. Set that equals to wait. Set that equals to use state by default is going to be empty array all right and also here i'm going to create the loading so let's say loading and also set loading okay and also here i'm going to say set equals to your state by default is going to be false and also i'm going to create the error so let's say cons error set error Set that equals to use state, all right? By default, it's going to be null. Okay, nice. So here we need to return that. So we need to return the response. We need to return the loading and the error, like that. Okay. So in here, what we need to do is create a function. Okay, I'm going to call this fetch data set so equals to i'm going to create a sync function okay it's going to be a row function like that and in here i'm going to use try and catch so let's say try and down here i'm going to say catch okay we catch the error and then down here we grab the finally all right cool so in try here what we need to do is we need to set the loading okay we need to set the loading to true all right and then down here we need to create variable called rest set that equals to i'm going to await let's say axios just make sure you import axios from axios and in here we need to put the api so i'm going to use this random api where is that right here okay we need to just copy this and put that here okay but of course we need to say https colon slash slash Okay, and down here we need to set the response into rest.data. Okay, so in catch here we need to set the error into error. Okay, 
and also finally we set the loading back to false okay cool so of course we need to send the fetch data as well here okay nice so now let's go back to app.jsx and in here we need to grab the use x use all right so we need to grab the i'm going to grab the fetch data fetch data and the response and the loading okay and also here i'm going to say set equals to use axios so let's say axios okay like that so now here i'm going to run the fetch data inside the use effect okay so let's say use effect it's come from react and also here i'm going to fetch the data like that so we need to run the fetch data in here all right cool so now we need to just console log the response so we can see what we have in here so let's say lock the response all right let's see in the browser here i'm going to inspect and see in the console here what we have so as you can see we have the object here with mills and this data here as you can see so as you can see we have the object and then mills so we can do in the use axios here let's say dot and then we access the mill and then i'm going to get the first array so if i save this let's refresh okay if i save and as you can see we get this data here okay pretty nice but the first thing is we get the empty array so i think we need to use empty object here let's do object okay cool so now let's go back to app.jsx here and right here we need to check if the loading is true okay we need to just return uh let's say loading for now let's say h1 i'm going to put loading okay all right so so here we need to just change this with uh let's say response dot string mail okay and also we need to grab the thumbnail here okay just copy that and go to image here this source okay we need to change this into uh, let's say response dot string mail thumb but of course we need to do structuring this make it simple so i'm going to use cons and then i grab the string mail thumb from response okay and also we can grab the let's say string mail okay so down here we can use this string mail okay we can just remove this response like that okay so now save and let's take a look as you can see we get this title and then this image and next these instructions we need to change that with oh, this one here string instructions so we need to grab okay from response and then in where's this in the p tag here we need to put that like so wait like so all right so we get the instructions cool so now let's grab the youtube string youtube okay so let's go here and i'm going to put right here first and then we can showing the url in this source here as you can see here watch question mark v and then equals so in here we need to use embed okay we need to change this url first so we need to go up here i'm going to create variable let's say cons let's give a name youtube url okay so that equals to i'm going to grab the string youtube and then dot i'm going to use replace here okay replace i'm going to replace this watch question mark v equals okay this one here i'm gonna copy and paste that in here so i'm going to change this with let's say embed okay embed and then slash all right so now we can use this youtube url in this iframe e here so i'm going to remove that and put the youtube url right here 
So now we should see this uh, beautiful SE. Okay, as you can see, nice. Okay, cool. I refresh, something wrong happened. So let's go to console and what we have wrong here. Okay, another property replace. So I think we need to add question mark here first. All right, cool. So now we need to working with the ingredients, but as you can see in the respawn API here, we get this string ingredient one, string ingredient two, and then nine here, okay? And the value of this ingredient is the string measure, as you can see here, okay? So now what we need to do is, I'm gonna close this. So what we need to do is down here, okay? I'm going to create variable. I'm going to use let because I'm going to push the value inside this uh, variable. So I'm going to use ingredients. Okay, so that equals to empty array. All right. So in here, of course, we need to just uh, comment it out for now. So in here, I'm going to say object. Okay, object dot keys. Okay, because we have object here. Okay. So object.keys response, all right? And then here, I'm going to say for each, okay? So let's say for each, and then I grab the item and then the index, okay? So here, I'm going to check first if, okay? So let's say if the response, and I'm going to access the string ingredients okay this one here all right and the index we need to grab from this index here okay so here i'm going to say like so i'm going to put the index and then if this is axis this is have a value okay down here we need to say ingredients dot push Okay, we need to push object inside this array. Okay, so in here, I'm going to do ingredient change. Okay, and the value is this one here. All right, I can just copy this. Put that here, right? And down here, we need to use the measure. Okay, so let's say measure. And then here, I'm going to send the response and then let's say string measure and then here we are going to put the index as well so let's say index okay so now we know that these ingredients have a value okay like this one ingredient and the value and then measure and then the value okay so now we need to just remove this all right and let's try to save and see what we have as you can see we have banana wine because we have uh where's that right here as you can see we have banana cacao avocado and then sea salt okay and the value here one three all right yeah cool really nice but now as you can see if i click this nothing happened so now we need to handle that. So let's go to button here and we need to say on click event here. Okay, so let's say on click set equals to when I click this, I need to run the fetch data function. Okay, so now if I click this one, as you can see, we get loading and then we get new meals. Click again, new meals. Okay, pretty cool. But again, we need to add the beautiful loading skeleton. So now let's create another component inside the source. I'm going to create a folder called components. And inside this components folder, I'm going to create a file called skeleton.jsx like that. So let's see RFCE and here, so I'm going to remove this skeleton and then in here, I'm going to add class name set equals to, let's say animate 
balls all right and in here i'm going to create a div and this div have a class name and in here i'm going to use backtick okay so of course we need to do like so and then in here i'm gonna say background gray let's say 300 and also the rounded rounded uh let's say medium all right and also i'm going to add different width and hakes so i'm going to put the class come from the props here let's say class name and i'm going to put the class name in here so let's put like so class name okay cool so now we can use this skeleton inside the app so let's do in the, in the loading here okay so in here i'm going to return a div okay like that and then inside in here we need to put the skeleton like that so now if i save let's take a look if i click this nothing happened because we don't put specific a uh, hake and width here so let's add the class name into i'm gonna say hake to 10 for example so now if i save if i click this as you can see here up here all right we get this skeleton but of course we need to add the class name in here which is the maximal here okay we need to just copy this one and put that in here like that of course we need to do the padding as well so let's say padding vertically into let's say 10 okay as you can see as you can see right there we got the uh, loading skeleton but here if the size of the browser is a desktop we need to set the medium here and we need to change the width into i'm gonna set that to 40 okay so now as you can see as you can see here okay nice but if i go to mobile it's going to be 100 percent cool so down here again we need to copy and paste and the hake let's say let's say the width here i'm going to change that to 72 okay let's say 72 and also the margin top i'm gonna set that to six as you can see okay nice and now this one here so here i'm going to put the diff okay so this diff here basically have a class name called grid so let's say class name grid and let's say gap i'm gonna set that to four and for medium i'm going to use uh two columns so let's say grid columns two okay nice so i'm going to add the margin top to four and inside in here i'm going to put the skeleton so let's say skeleton and then inside the skeleton we need to send the class name okay so this class name is i'm going to set if the size is medium and more i'm going to send the hake to 72 but else which is in the mobile i'm going to set the hake to 52. all right so now let's copy and paste this and i think this is just the same so let's save and as you can see nice so now let's do add a skeleton in this instruction so down here i'm gonna do i think we can just copy this this one here right you can just copy and put that in here the width 72 and yeah i think this is the same and now we need to grab this one copy and paste that in here the hake i'm going to set it to let's say let's say hake to uh 64 and also the margin top i'm gonna set that to six okay so let's just copy this and like so and the hake i'm gonna set that to 72 so now save and let's take a look okay nice so if i go to desktop version as you can see really clean yeah we have different 
mails and if i click this it's going to be open the uh youtube video okay really cool yeah i think we're done with this simple project guys hope you learned something new and bye